First of all, I would like to start by thanking ABG for hosting us here today at the ABG Renewable Energy and Clean Tech Seminar. I'm very excited to be here today since it's the first time that uh, EcoWave Power will be sharing actual results from its Gibraltar operational and grid connected wave energy array. I will start my presentation by a general background about the wave energy industry. I will tell you a little bit about our development pathway. Then we'll go through the results from the Gibraltar operational wave energy array and will finalize my presentation by presenting our future plans. So, why wave energy? This time I decided to focus on the European market. According to a study by the European Technology and Innovation Platform for Ocean Energy, by 2050, ocean energy can deliver 100 gigawatt of capacity, which is equivalent to 10% of Europe's electricity consumption today. In addition, it is expected to employ 400,000 Europeans. It will also play a key role in smoothing production peaks and balancing Europe's electricity grid. And in Sweden alone, wave energy can supply about 10 terawatts of electricity per year, which is comparable to about 12 nuclear power plants. So if wave energy is so great, why don't we see it everywhere? Why didn't wave energy commercialize? In that regard, it's important to understand that 99% of the wave energy developers decided to install their systems in the offshore, similar to the Pelamis installation that we see here on the screen. When you're going to the offshore, you're facing four significant problems. The first one is the cost of the systems. If you want to install in the offshore, you need chips and divers and underwater mooring and underwater cables, which makes the whole process very capital intensive. The second problem is the reliability of those systems. In the offshore, they face wave heights of 20 meters or even higher. And unfortunately, no man-made stationary equipment can survive the loads from a 20 meters wave height. When insurance co companies saw that the prices are so high and the reliability is so low, they refused to insure these installations. And one of the most surprising things was that environmentalists which were supposed to be the greatest proponents and supporters of wave energy, were actually objecting offshore wave energy because it created a new presence on the ocean floor and disturbed the ecological balance. In addition, offshore wave energy was very difficult and expensive to connect it to the grid because of the big distance from the offshore device to the land. EcoWave Power decided on a completely different approach. We decided to stay away from the offshore and install our technologies in the onshore and nearshore on existent man-made structures, such as piers, breakwaters, jetties, and other types of marine structures. Here we can see a short video that explains how our technology works. Floaters are attached, are attached to existing, existing structures, structures along the shoreline, the shoreline such, as such as concrete piers, piers or jetties. jetties. The floaters, the floaters move, move up and down, down with the waves. With the waves. The motion moves a piston that compresses hydraulic fluid. When that fluid is released from the accumulator, the energy goes to a hydraulic motor that turns an electric generator and produces clean electricity. These systems can last over 20 years and are pre-programmed for rough weather. We currently have 17 patents and patent spendings for our technology, including a PCT and a patents in Europe and the United States. So what are the advantages of our technology? The first advantage is that it's cost efficient. The construction is simple. It's all done from the land side. We don't need ships or divers or underwater moorings or cables. In addition, it is very reliable. In case of upcoming storms, we have a patented storm protection mechanism, as we can see in the video here. The floaters, they just go up above the water level and they lock in the upward position as though they're part of the jetty until the storm passes. When the storm passes, the floaters go back into the water and commence operation. Because of the low price and the high reliability, we are fully insurable by reputable insurance companies and we're 100% environmentally friendly. We do not connect to the ocean floor, we only connect to man-made existing structures. Here we can see some photos from the installation of the Gibraltar power station. We can see that the floaters have been brought through a very narrow tunnel, uh, which was of course difficult, but still easier and more cost efficient than doing the installation from the seaside using ships and divers. Uh, we used mostly regular equipment to do the installation, such as cranes, forklifts, and so on. 
In this slide, you can see the EcoWave Power Development Pathway. We started in the Hydromechanical Institute in Kiev in 2011. You can see that the floaters were very small in size. They were a scale of 1 to 100. We were testing here different floater shapes to see how different shapes impact the generation amounts that we receive. When we received an approval from the Hydro Mechanical Institute for the workability of the system and a recommendation to enlarge it to greater scale, we installed it in the port of Jaffa in 2014. The scale here is much bigger, 1 to 5. The floater size is 2.5 in length, 1.7 in width, and 0.9 in height. We used our Jaffa port installation in order to test new floater shapes, new materials, uh, improvements in the automation system and control system, and get ready to our first grid-connected power station, which is our Gibraltar power station. In 2016, we opened our Gibraltar power station. Again, we increased the scale of the floaters. The scale became 1 to 4. The, each floater size is 2.8 in length, 2.1 in width, and 1 meter in height. The power station has been connected to the grid since 2016 and transmitting electricity into the grid. We are currently under construction of the EWP EDF1 project in collaboration with EDF Renewables IL, a subsidiary of the national electric company in France, EDF, and uh, with co-funding from the Israeli Energy Ministry. Again, we see here increasing scale. It's scale of 1 to 2. The length of each, pro of each floater is 3.6. The width is 2.8 and the height is 1.5. We're very excited about this project. Uh, it's in very advanced construction phases and it's the first time that wave energy will connect to the grid in Israel. Now let's look a little bit into our Gibraltar power station. We can see here that it's located on a former military ammunition jetty and it's accessible via 500 meter access tunnel. Now, the Gibraltar site is not an ideal site in terms of energy generation. However, it is an ideal site for testing because it has different phenomena that enables us to develop a very strong, reliable product that will be suitable for implementation in different locations around the world. Why the site is not ideal? First of all, we can look at the Gibraltar wave climate. We know that uh, our system starts operation at 0 0.5 meters. However, in Gibraltar, 52.6% of the time, the waves are below half a meter. This is actually a good thing for us for our testing because it enables us to work on our automation system and on our conversion unit in order to improve it so it starts generating from the lowest waves possible. In addition, although most of the time, or at least half of the time, the waves of Gibraltar are in, of a low nature, there are a lot of stormy days during the years where we get wave heights of 3 meters or even 4 meters. That enables us to test our storm protection mechanism. So basically we can test a little bit of both world, worlds. We can program the system to start generating from the lowest wave possible to the highest wave possible, and it enables us to test our storm protection mechanism. Another thing that uh, we can see through the wave rows that we're seeing on the screen is the wave direction. We see that actually the waves in Gibraltar, they don't come for the front of the floaters. They're actually hitting the floaters from the side. For wave energy generation, that's not an ideal thing. Of course, we want the waves to be hitting the floaters directly and for the floaters to be elevated by the power of the waves. Here, basically, the wave direction is side waves which are mostly hitting the connections of the floaters to the pier. Any wave developer will tell you that's a negative thing for regular operation. However, for testing, that's amazing because it enabled us to develop very strong connection, very strong connections to the pier, uh, which we can use in our future installation in very wavy conditions. In addition, there is an interesting phenomenon in Gibraltar that is called wave reflection. Usually, when you choose to install your wave energy technology on a pier or a jetty or a breakwater, you're expecting reflection from the actual wall. But our site in Gibraltar is also very close to the rock of Gibraltar. So we don't only get reflection from the actual structure, but we also get reflection from the, from the rock itself. So we have here multiple reflections, which are, again, not the best for uh, operational purposes, but is very good for our testing purposes and to be able to prepare our equipment to uh, 
different with different conditions around the world. And uh, the last thing that we will see here is actually the AKS uh, structural analysis of the jetty. They performed bathymetry tests throughout the whole jetty and discovered that in the little uh, area that were uh, installed out of the jetty, the dominant water depth is one to three meters. One to three meters is definitely not a very significant depth. depth. Uh, one meter from the seabed is actually such minimal depth that it creates different changes to the wave height. Uh, the wave does not come clean, it sometimes starts breaking before it actually reaches that point, uh, which uh, enables us to program our system to handle with uh, different clashes between the waves because of the reflection or changes in the wave shape and size due to the bathymetry of the location. Now here we can see the Gibraltar operational time from August 2018 till July 2019, 12 months. The green is showing us uh, the times that we're harvesting energy to the grid. The blue is uh, when we stop the operation of the system because of calm seas, uh, basically wave heights below 0.5 meters. The red is storm protection mechanism and the gray is downtime. The important thing here is that uh, in 2018 till 2019, we were able to achieve significantly higher operational time than in the previous year. We had average amount of floaters in the water, six floaters, and uh, as compared to four floaters in the previous year. Now this uh, actually is a breakdown of all the technical and maintenance and repair issues that we had with the Gibraltar power station. The good thing here that we can see is that most of the maintenance and repair performed are pretty standard for the electric and hydraulic sectors. For example, upgrade of the control system, change of flexible pipes, changing pins in the hydro cylinder, fixing uh, damaged bearings and so on. The good thing that uh, we were able to gain from our experience in Gibraltar is the fact that we were able to decrease the direct cost of maintenance and repair from 18% in 2017 to 9% in 2018 and finally 4% in 2019. Now in terms of the actual power production, because our Gibraltar site is a site with a low energy density, uh, what we saw in the wave heights of Gibraltar. How we measure success is basically by checking how do we measure our production in comparison to the expected production for the site. So in the years 2017-2018, we were able to reach an average of 31%, which is quite low. Uh, it's good for a new technology, but quite low for the amount of energy that we wanted to generate. However, in 2018 and 2019, because of improvements to the automation system and because of much less incidence of the maintenance and repair, we were able to reach 70% of the available energy in the wave heights that we operate. So here is a comparison between the two years. We can see the red is the average for 2017-2018 and the purple line is the average for 2018-2019. The next phase for us, uh, which is under construction, as I mentioned before, is our EWP EDF1 project. We can see here the difference between that project to the Gibraltar project. In Gibraltar, we had only eight floaters. Here, we will install 10 floaters. The sizes of the floaters will also be different from 2.8 length in Gibraltar to 3.6 in the EWP EDF1 power station. Uh, the width will grow to 2.8 eight instead of 2.1 and the height will become 1.5 instead of one meter. In terms of volume, it means almost double the volume for each floater. In addition, the arm length will be extended as well, which is expected to cause higher energy generation amounts. The weight will of course be higher as well because of the larger size and the installed capacity will be 100 kilowatt, but a much newer and improved generation of the technology with the assistance of uh, EDF Renewables IL, our partner, and with Siemens as our strategic uh, supplier for the electrical parts and electrical improvement of the parts in the system. The next phase after our EWP EDF1 project is our first commercial scale power station. 
We're currently looking at Portugal for the first commercial scale one megawatt power station due to the agreement that we entered in April with APDL, the port of Leixois. As part of the agreement, uh, they gave us a concession for four different breakwaters for development of up to a 20 megawatt power station. Our goal is to start with one megawatt, since for up to one megawatt, there is a short licensing procedure in Portugal, which takes only six months. We hope that uh, COVID-19 will not have any impact on that uh, number and that we can really finalize our licensing in that site in six months. The good thing about the first one megawatt project is that you can see here that we are not changing the size of the floaters, the arm length, the weight, uh, the only thing that is changing is the installed capacity, uh, which means that we actually have very, very minimal to no risk of scalability. Uh, the technology will be done exactly similar to the EWP EDF1 project, which is a very, very good thing. Here we can see the forecasted power matrix for the one megawatt power station. We can see that already in a wave height of two and a half meters, we're reaching the full capacity of the power station, 980 kilowatt. Uh, that's amazing because uh, in sites like Portugal, there is two and two and a half meters wave height most of the time. So most of the time, the technology is expected to perform very well. Uh, we believe that our first commercial scale power station will help prove that wave energy can generate significant energy amounts and become profitable, which is very important for the industry scalability. Currently, the company also is holding a more than 200 megawatt in its project pipeline with planned projects in Europe, Asia, Australia, Mexico, Israel, and other locations. Um, the reason why we're working so early, some might say, uh, on such massive project pipeline is because we understand that there's a certain number of sites in the world with very good breakwaters or very good wave conditions for the installation of our technology and we definitely want to be there first so we're kind of blocking the best site for us the best sites for us in the world we want to already have collaboration with them we want to already have the wave surveys for this site in order to be able to build our execution schedule correctly and start executing many power stations in parallel in the right time i would like to finalize by saying that although i believe that wave energy is an immense an amazing source of electricity, I truly believe that the answer to the world problem of climate change is the combination of all renewable energy sources, wind and wave and solar and tidal and any other sources should combine forces and create a 100% environmentally friendly world. Thank you.